Before we start our lesson this morning, we want to thank our senior pastor of the Convent Avenue Baptist Church, Reverend Dr. Jesse T. Williams, and the leader of our Christian Education Department, the Reverend Dr. Charlene Faison, and our Sunday School Supervisor, Deacon Willard Tolson, and our Sunday School Superintendent, Brother Ronald Smith, for this opportunity. We want to thank them for this opportunity to teach this morning. My name is Annette Barden, and this is Deacon Michael Wright, and this is Sister Valencia Caldwell. Our lesson this morning is taken from Matthew 21, 1 through 11, the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. I will be reading, first let's pray. Everlasting Father, you are the mighty God. You sent your son and he performed the final sacrifice. You deserve all our praise. Show us that your goodness is more important than our desires. Encourage us to seek good and upright ways. Thank you for loving us, not only just yesterday or today, but always. No matter what our sins are, we thank you again in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now I'm going to give you a little background history from Matthew 21 to 20, uh, 21. It's also, I'm going to just tell you about uh, Matthew's in 21 and in Matthew 28. It is uh, devoted to a final week of Jesus' life through, through the resurrection. It was for that, for the, it was for the Passover, two million, um, two million Jewish people made their annual pilgrimage into Jerusalem for the feast and celebration. That week, the world changed forever. Today's text comes from Monday of the fateful week, and it covers the triumphal entry. This is in all four Gospels, Mark 11, 1 to 11, Luke 19, 28 to 44, and John 12, 12 to 19. Matthew's Gospel records, includes 41 prophetic quotes. Uh, for, it includes 41 prophetic quotes. It's, it's what seems others who profess to be the Messiah, the conqueror of the land, the warrior, who set to overthrow the ruling government with, with processions of the great wars, they rode horses and they were entering into the cities. Several months before Jesus had warned his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things, including death. That's in Matthew 16, 21 to 28. The idea of Jesus dying was completely foreign to Peter and the other disciples for what Jesus' mission was to be. Jesus assures his disciples that God would raise him to life on the third day. Matthew 20, 18 to 19. This was the excellent moment during the Passover for Jesus to make himself known to so many people at one time. Jesus ushered in as, as a king, knew this was the end of his earthly life and the beginning of his eternal reign. I'm gonna have uh, Sister Valencia Caldwell read the vocal verses from the NLT. Thank you, Sister Annette. Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. 
as Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem. They came to the town of Bethphage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them, sent two of them on ahead. Go into the village over there, he said. As soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there with his coat beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you are doing, just say, the Lord needs them, and he will immediately let you take them. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's coat. The two disciples did as Jesus commanded. Verse 7, they brought the donkey and the coat to him and threw their garments over the coat, and he sat on it. Amen. Okay, the preparation for the triumphal entry, I'm going to give you an answer from 1, from one to 7. Uh, the Lord sent two of his disciples into the town of Bethpage to obtain a donkey and a coat. The city of Bethpage was no, no longer exists. It appears to have been on the eastern side of Mount Olives, about a mile from Jerusalem. This fulfills the prophecy of Zechariah. All four gospels record the occasion that we celebrate on Palm Sunday each year though none of them provide the names of the two disciples, but each includes different details and emphasis. Matthew endowed with the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy. The Mount of Olives is a place where Jesus agonized and is betrayed, the place where he ascended into heaven, and also supposed place of his second advent. That's in Acts 1, uh, 1, 9 to 12. The Mount of Olives is mentioned often in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 24, 3, uh, Mark 11, 1, and Luke 19, 37, and John 8, 1. The Mount of Olives is a mountain ridge east of and adjacent to uh, Jerusalem's old city. It is named for the olive groves that once covered the slopes. Jesus spent time on the mount teaching and prophesying to his disciples, and he frequently passed there, passed it. That's in Luke 21. Uh, uh, 37. Each day Jesus was teaching at the temple and each evening he went out to spend the night on the hill called the Mount of Olives. More, uh, more, uh, more prophets are quoted in Matthew than in Mark, Luke, and John combined. What is significant is that Jesus chose a humble animal to ride into the city, not a mighty war horse. The fulfillment of the prophecy. Jesus fulfilled the words of Zechariah 9, 9, that predicted Israel's future king would, would ride, he would ride uh, into Jerusalem on a colt. I'm going to read Zechariah 9, 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. See your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Zechariah also wrote about the Messiah's 
humility on this day when he would ride into Jerusalem on a coat. This uh, indicated the meekness as well as his sense of royalty. Zechariah prophesied and others were not fulfilled. Other, uh, Zechariah's prophecies and others were not fulfilled by random choice. The events they foresaw were pieces of God's deliberate plan a plan carried out by Jesus. Jesus did not come to destroy the law or the prophets, but to fulfill. This is no perfect path between the prophets who were given a glimpse of God's plan and the Messiah who enacted the plan centuries later. Uh, that's in uh, Matthew 1, 22 to 23, Matthew 2, 5 to 6, and Matthew 8, 14 to 17. Before showing himself to be Christ, Jesus dis displayed his humility through the response he told his disciples to uh, to the response he told his disciples to give to those questioning the disciples regarding their taking of the animals. It was a humble request rather than a demand. Simply say, the, no, the Lord needs them. The Lord needs them. Jesus did not enter the city on a horse like a conquering general would do in the first, uh, in the, the, how they would work in the first century uh, AD, but in an uh, unassuming manner, fit for a prince of peace. The prompt obedience of the two disciples showed their confidence in the Lord. They did not worry about the appearance of steel in the donkey or the coat, but believed that the answer Jesus gave them would suffice. anyone that questioned them. Their, we questioned their actions. That was in uh, Mark 11, 5 and 6. Mark 11, 5 and 6, I'm going to read. Some people stand in their ears, what are you doing untying that coat? They answered, as Jesus had told them, and the people let them go. and the people let them go. Once back with Jesus, the disciples took off their loose outer garments and placed them on the colt as a saddle. This action of obedience displayed the disciples' honor for their master, who had already they regarded as their Messiah, the long-awaited king of the Jews the long-awaited king of the Jews. Deacon Michael, do you have want to expound on the, what I just read, we just read? Yes. Um, thank you, Sister Burke. <clears throat> As the scripture stated earlier, Jesus sent two of his disciples to secure a donkey to ride into Jerusalem in order to fulfill the prophecy of Zacharias. It is possible that Jesus planned beforehand to have a donkey and her coat ready for his use. But it is also possible that only his reputation preceded him. When the owner of the donkey and the coat learned that Jesus requested them, he gave them freely. What is significant in the lesson what is significant in the lesson is that Jesus chose a humble animal to ride into the city. As Sister Burton said earlier, not a mighty war horse. Brothers and sisters, Jesus rode in on a coat, a symbol of humility. This made his entry and crucifixion forever, remember, 
forever memorable. But the presence of a king on a coat did not keep the people from praising him. They received the prophet among them and greeted him as a king. What do you do in your life to show humility? This nicely laid, laid out chapter 21 focus on the overall rejection of Jesus by the Jewish nation. The second section of this chapter deals with Jesus presented himself to Israel as their king. While many accept and praise Jesus as the Messiah, the majority of them of this same group will reject him once they realize Jesus is not there to overthrow Rome. Let's look at rejection in Matthew 20, 26. It says that Judas betrayed him in John 18, 17, and uh, verse 5 and verse 27, Peter denied him. And at that moment, the rooster crowed, began to crow, just as Jesus said. What is interesting to see in the four Gospels is how Jesus handled rejection. Jesus promised that non-believers will, will, will reject Christians like you and I. And I, because of, and, be, and they, they will also reject him because of our belief in Jesus. And Jesus said, non-believers will hate you because of me. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. You can see that in Matthew 10, 22. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, before we continue, let's look at Matthew, how Jesus traveled. And uh, in Matthew 20, chapter 20, says that Jesus was on a road from Jericho to Jerusalem. It is about 17 miles uphill journey. Bethpage means fig house. This is a hillside location that is part of Mount Olive area. From this point, one has a full view of Jerusalem, which is in the valley surrounded by mountain range. This spot is about 300 feet higher than where the temple was located. We know from the other Gospels that the village ahead is called Bethany. Jesus told his disciples, go into the town. Here is what you are going to find. There will be a donkey and a donkey coat. Take them. And if anybody question you, say, the Lord need them. This event was a miracle all to itself. Would you give something to would you give something to a stranger just because they said the Lord need them? It also shows Jesus' prediction in advance what had what has go, what was going to happen. Zacharias was encouraging them with the prophecy of the king is coming. Of all the Old Testament predictions about Jesus, this is the only one I can think of where Jesus goes out of his way to arrange the fulfillment of that prediction. Okay. Very Thank good. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mike, Deacon Mike. Sister Valencia, did you say something? Yes, I would love to say something about verses one through seven. So this is a story of a prophet king, Lord king, who is so very much different from any other kings. 
in this time and age and century. Different in all aspects of the word. This king, Lord King, Jesus, operated in humility. As we know, most kings, most kings, they parade their, uh, their royalty around their cities with their dignitaries and their golden chariots and their beautiful music, beautiful horses, their gear, their military forces, just to show their self-absorption, absorption, absorption, excuse me. You know, they're so self-absorbed. But here we find a prophet king, Lord King, who rode into the city of Jerusalem riding on a lowly donkey coat. And he had a purpose. And his purpose was to eventually give his life, as we all know, for the remission of sins for God's people. A future sacrificial lamb, and yet a few days away. His purpose was to take over the hearts of the people by submitting himself and dying on a Roman's cross. I want to say and um, allow the knowledge of verses 1 through 7 to be known as Jesus came as a rescuer. He came as a rescue for God's people, a very well-accepted king, Lord King, to Jerusalem with palm branches singing Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And he was well accepted. Thank you, Sister Annette. Okay, now uh, Deacon Wright, here we will be reading uh, verses of, uh, 20, of eight through 11. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Most of the crowd spreaded their garments on the road ahead of him and others cut branches from the trees and spreaded them on the road. Jesus was in the center of the possessions and the people all around him were shouting, praise God for the son of David, blessing on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in the highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as they entered. Who is this? They asked. And the crowd replied, It is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Okay. Well, I'm going to speak on... 8 to 11. The Lord had avoided uh, open display of his identity in the past, but now he would enter Jerusalem claiming to be the long-awaited son of David, the prophesied king of the future kingdom of Israel. The phrase son of David was synonymous with that Jesus was indeed the Christ whom they expected would be a descendant of David. That's in Psalms 118, 25 to 26. I'm gonna read that Psalm. O Lord, save us, O Lord. Grant us success, 26. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. For the house of the Lord, we bless you. He previously avoided getting arrested, but now Jesus would allow the Jewish authority to apprehend him and condemn him to death. The crowd coming out to see Jesus, prompted by his earlier raising Lazarus from the dead, many wanted to see the one they believe to be their Messiah. They honored the, the Lord by laying their garments 
on the road for the donkeys to walk on. And uh, cutting off branches of the nearby trees and placing them before the Savior. John alone uh, mentions the branches came from palm trees. That's uh, John 12, 13. I'm going to read. They took the palm branches and they went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna! Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. Amen. This also signified that their belief that Jesus was their long-awaited king. They took the branches and went out to meet him, shouting Hosanna. The Hebrew term for Hosanna means save. Hosanna in the highest refers to God's dwelling place in heaven. Luke also tells us that some of the religious leaders demanded that Jesus silence the crowd. Jesus did not silence the people. That's in Luke 1939 uh, to uh, 1939 to 41. I'm going to read that. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciple. 40. Tell, I, I, he says, I tell you, if I tell them to keep quiet, the stones will cry out. 41. As he approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and he cried. He wept. He wept over it. Jesus, uh, Jesus uh, tells, uh, he, 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 when, he, when he cried, he, he, he had predicted the tragic things that, was, uh, that awaited Jerusalem. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. Those in the city wondered about the one who arrived in such fanfare and adulation. Who is this, they asked. That's in verse 10. Though many had seen Jesus perform miracles, and had heard him teach, they simply questioned his identity. In spite of many signs that verified Jesus' claim to be the Messiah, most of the Jews of Jerusalem at that time regarded him as no more than a prophet. He came from Nazareth and from Galilee. This disqualified him for being anything more than that. They could not believe that anyone of prophetic significance could come from that town. Certainly, the religious leaders would not have hailed Jesus as the Messiah or a king of the Jews coming from that town. Their the hatred would soon turn in a, to a plot to have Jesus arrested and crucified. Mm -hmm. Matthew does not record Jesus returning anywhere near Jerusalem until that point because this was why the people in Jerusalem weren't sure, did not know who he was. Matthew presents a, a Jerusalem in the negative light because Jerusalem is where King Herod reigned. And, it, and he called for all Jesus and all the young boys of, Beth, uh, to be, to, of Bethlehem to be murdered. So Joseph takes his family and he moves them from Bethlehem near Jerusalem to Nazareth. When, uh, when uh, Jerusalem politics landed John the Baptist in jail, Jesus moves his ministry north to Galilee. That's in Matthew 4, 12. Jesus is called of the rabbi eight times throughout the gospel. 
and he is called a prophet a dozen times, about a dozen times. Jesus quoted the Old Testament prophets. A prophet's role was to speak the truth to power and to deliver, and to deliver God's word to the people. A prophet is not an incorrect title for Jesus, for him. It's merely stopped short of acknowledging his full title, his full title, Messiah. Amen. Valencia. Yes. I want you to speak on what uh, we just read. Certainly, sister teacher. Um, verses 8 through 11 encompasses so much of our prophet Jesus. It encompasses so much in reference to who our Jesus is. Who is this Jesus? I would purport to you today, who is Jesus to you? This Jesus that came into Jerusalem, that created this uproar, that made everyone question his status, his nature, his purpose, had many names at the time. Some were not so delicate, as Sister Teacher have already pointed out to us, and others were very uplifting, and others were in a positive light of who this Jesus is. I would like to purport to you today that this was our Savior. This was our Messiah. This was the people of Jerusalem at that time, Messiah, the one that had been spoken on in scriptures past. What we know now is that he is the son. He is part of the Trinity. He is Jesus, the creator with God. Right. He is Jesus bringing in our good. He is Jesus. He was Jesus before Abraham was. He is the sustainer of life, the beginning, the middle, and the end. Most importantly, this Jesus, in Matthew's account, verses um, 8 through 11, is really referring to our Redeemer, our Redeemer that is on his way to save us from our sins. Mm -hmm. That's good news. That's good news. Mm -hmm. That's, this is good news. Mm -hmm. At that particular time, most people, most of the Jews and the crowds, they did not have any um, knowledge of how far this could be able to proceed. But as we know now, Sister Annette, that good news was all about hope. Mm. And it was all about promise. And it was all about light. And it was all about peace. That's the bottom line to who this Jesus is, okay? He made it possible. Our God through the humble servants of Jesus, the prophet Jesus, the Lord Jesus, the servant Jesus, the one who rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, has opened the door to truth. And I purport to you today, seek after that truth, that truth with his Jesus, and he will also become your savior. Thank you, Sister Nan. Okay. Michael, do you want to read, discuss the meaning? Uh, yes. Jesus tried to instill in his disciples' minds the uh, prospect of, of, that, of that road to his future glory was bound to the cross. With his experience of rejection, suffering, and humiliation, only after the resurrection were the disciples in a position to see what true discipleship meant. I also like to add to the lesson, uh, Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is, is, is uh, mentioned in all four Gospels account, 
We call it Palm Sunday. As the followers of Jesus cut down uh, palm branches and laid them at Jesus' feet, John Gospel says they were palm branches. That's uh, John 12, 13. Now, the religious leaders should have known that this is the day that the Messiah would come to present himself before the people of Israel. Even if they didn't know the exact day, they should have known. The crowd following Jesus was saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the high. Remember that moment. Remember that must of the same. Remember that most of that same crowd later will reject Jesus. This is why I believe they were hoping that Jesus would overthrow Rome. When they saw that was not Jesus' intention and saw him beaten by the Romans, this led to the rejection. It is, it is also a reminder uh, that an emotional reaction by a crowd is not, is not neither to get the people to change their lifestyle. It has to be a change of heart. Mm -hmm. Notes of Matthew, chapter 21, Palm Sunday. It was four days prior to Passover. One of the requirements for the Passover, uh, Passover dinner was to eat a roasted lamb. On this Sunday is the day when the religious leaders picked a lamb to be slaughtered. Now, I would like to uh, read, on this Sunday is the day when the religious leader right, picked, a, picked a lamb and slaughtered it. No lamb with blemish, defect, or any kind picked. While the religious leaders was picking which lamb to choose, here is Jesus saying in effect, choose me. Mm -hmm. I am the true lamb of God, coming to be sacrificed for your sins. Verse 11 and 10. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowd answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The population of Jerusalem grew extremely for the Passover season. When Jesus came trotting into Jerusalem on a donkey coat, was seen by a large crowd. It was, the, it was the major event of the moment. Remember Jesus rode down a hill where everyone could see him. It is interesting to know that the crowd saw Jesus as a prophet, but not as a Messiah. Remember this, Jesus asked his disciples who do the people say that I am? Peter answered, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or some other prophet. In the world today, many acknowledge Jesus as a prophet, but not the Messiah. For example, Muslims consider Jesus a great prophet, but nothing more than that. My point is, unless you understand that Jesus is God, that Jesus is the promised Messiah, anything less than that is not acceptable for eternal salvation. Amen. 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 
Okay. Amen. We have a couple of questions for you at the chat room to 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 do, to, to, do, to, do, to, to dwell on to do, answer whatever. Why is humility a hard quality to find in many people? And another question is, why is humility important in leadership? Okay. And I want to answer what leadership qualities are. Lead, leadership qualities, you, you, you lead to serve. And you admit your mistakes. And you seek to put others ahead. You, and you compliment their, their value. Mm -hmm. And you trust others with respect. Yes. Well, I got one that I would like to share with y'all. Go uh, right ahead, Michael. That the Holy Spirit gave to me at the last minute today right. uh, while I was picking up my car. All right. It's called the bread, the living bread. Okay. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eat of this bread, mm -hmm. he will live forever. We got John 6. 51. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what this says. Uh, it's, uh, it's by someone. I, uh, it was an unnamed person. Okay. Uh, we all like food. Eating is one of the most pleasurable things we can do. We all enjoy our favorite dishes. In fact, we are so made that the body hunger for food. We are so fashioned that we can take in food and, des and deserve it. Transforming it into flesh and blood, food gives us nourishment and strength. All the food in the body needs, needs grows out of the earth or, it's, or is at least found on the earth. It is of an earthly kind. Jesus taught that we also have a spiritual life. Okay. The life too is so made that it requires food. It must also receive nourishment and be strengthened as the soul is not earthly. It cannot live by anything that is found on the earth. It must have the spiritual food that comes to us from God through his word. Mm. What is the spiritual food by which we live? Mm -hmm. We live on Christ and his presence in our lives. When Jesus said that, we must eat we must eat and drink his flesh and blood to have life he means that the gift of his body in death and the sharing of his blood on the cross creates and sustains our spiritual life the only way to to, to a full nourished life is through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Okay. Yes. My conclusion, hearing the story of Jesus always leaves us with a question. Who is he? Just a good teacher? Basing his lessons on God's laws? No more than a prophet? Giving insight from the Lord? Or is he the dawn of God, the promised Messiah, sent to save the world for the sin, for sin and death? Based on our answer, we also have a decision to make. Will we follow? Will we follow? OK, uh, next week's Easter Sunday, our lesson is
the Passau lamb lives. That'll be Matthew 28, 1 to 10? Yes, Sister Nat. Yeah, Matthew 28, yes. 1 to 10. That's next week, Palms, uh, uh, Easter Sunday, because today is Palm Sunday. Sunday. Palm Sunday. Okay, let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for sending Jesus, your son, to save us from our sins. May we always praise him. God has given us victory. We rejoice because we have won through the King Jesus. Jesus showed us what it's meant to be humble, and we follow him by sharing with others the joy we have in serving him. Amen. Amen. Okay, Sister Barnett, I also like to leave a leave a announcement. Uh, every Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, the soup kitchen, the soup ministry, is across the street at uh, 348, and uh, they're looking for volunteers to come in on Saturdays. Uh, if you could be here like at 10 o'clock, uh, the time is very short; it wouldn't take up too much time. But they are asking for volunteers. You can ask for Brother Ronald, Ronald Smith. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Convent Sunday Church School. On this Palm Sunday, I will read for you our Lenten meditation prepared by Deacon Tim Chadwick, who is co-teacher in class eight and the men's class A9. I will read uh, this Palm Sunday meditation and next week for Easter Sunday, I will read the Easter Lenten meditation as well. You can find the weeks of Lenten meditations on our church Facebook page. Palm Sunday is one of the most celebrated high holy days on the liturgical calendar. Palm Sunday commences what is globally known as Holy Week which includes Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, and Resurrection Sunday. The Holy Spirit uses these holy days to recall to our remembrance the love of God and Jesus' wonderful work on the cross. If you want to live a better life, invite Jesus into your heart and follow him. The palm tree has a testimony to share. God designed the palm tree to be storm resistant. Unlike other trees which can be uprooted, toppled, and blown away by the raging winds of life, the palm tree, by God's grace, will bend, but it will not break. It will prostrate itself, pay obeisance, and level itself to the ground until the, until the storm passes over. Afterwards, it miraculously lifts itself once again, raises its branches toward heaven. We have faced some strong headwinds over the last two years, pandemic, endemic, the inability to greet each other in the sanctuary, meet up at the theater, take in a sports event, or attend homegoing services for friends. Rising unemployment, violence, loneliness, depression, and the atrocities of war are all too common. We might feel like we have been leveled to the ground, but by God's grace, like the palm tree, we continue to lift our hands toward heaven, celebrating God in one another. We rejoice in the power of God's Passover and his deliverance of his children out of bondage. Allow your faith in God to transport you into the midst of the Passover crowd. Experience the excitement of being in the presence of the Lord. Praise God with the thousands who celebrated Jesus then and the billions who celebrate Jesus today. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. That's Zechariah 9.9. 9. Shout Hosanna in the highest, weep reverently, rejoice deeply, 
marvel at Jesus who was tempted with every manner of temptation but did not sin. Remember, God is in the midst of our suffering. He is well acquainted with our sorrow. He was wounded for our transgressions, was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Isaiah 53, 5. The people cast their garments and palms before him. Others cut down palm branches and waved them in the air, shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The children in the crowd, like the children of our Sunday school, were filled with power, joy, courage, and God-filled reverence upon seeing Jesus. If you use your sanctified imagination, you can hear the children singing, Ride on, King Jesus, ride on. No man can hinder you. We hope to see you in just minutes at morning worship here on this Palm Sunday. God bless you. See you next week for Sunday Church School. Bye now. <laughs>